Hey friends, this is Carissa from Inky Varied Designs. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome back to week three of Faces and Florals. As you can see, our theme this week is abstract and this is the girl I painted. So I'm going to start this video in real time just a bit so you can kind of see um, the actual process and how it goes. Um, and then I'll speed it up so you're not sitting here for 40 minutes watching me paint this girl. Um, so a few of the things that I'm using today, I'm really excited uh, to have these Rachel Beth handmade watercolors in skin tones. They came this week and I was so excited because it was perfect for the painting that I wanted to do today. And um, I ordered them months ago, but I knew that it was going to be a while. Uh, she was very upfront about that when we placed the pre-orders uh, because of all of the things going on in the world today and being, you know, hard to get the pigments that she needed to make these exact colors. But um, I'm super glad that I got the full pan set and not the half pans that I normally get from her because I can see myself using these all the time. So I hope she continues to make them because I'm sure I'll run out. Anyway, you can see that I am painting and this is my version of abstract uh, because I am not sketching beforehand with a pencil or anything like that that I can erase and uh, feel a little bit more in control. This type of painting I'm doing just pretty much freehand. I am, you know, creating the shape of her head and here you can see I'm kind of mapping out where her features need to go next and I do that by kind of hovering my paintbrush over the paper and not you know drawing the lines that I would with a pencil but just kind of mapping it out in my head visually using my paintbrush and then once I'm kind of confident I will go ahead and and start adding in those features with the nose you can see I was kind of had her nose a little off center so I just um, paint you know kind of blended that all together and created the little bulb of her nose and then the little two side nostrils of it and I absolutely really love how it turned out and then I just did her feet her lips so now we're gonna go in real time this is like super speed but at least you can get a sense of the actual process and the actual speed because I know many times when we're watching videos because the process can take time and we only have so many time so many minutes in the day to watch videos and um, especially for us creators it takes a long time to upload a 40 minute video um, but if you're interested perhaps I can do some lives um, and you guys want to do, you know, watch that. I can't promise anything. I'm in a very big transition right now. And uh, I'm not sure when I will be able to start creating videos again. But I may be able to hop on live a few times. Um, basically, a lot of my things are packed up right now. And um, I'm only keeping out my watercolors. So I think that'll be really fun to see and to focus on one medium because I get very overwhelmed and I have squirrel syndrome and I just want to use all of the things all of the time and I think by keeping out this one medium and a couple of sketchbooks I can really concentrate on what I really love which is watercolors but I don't ever I don't really put in the effort or the time or the focus on them as much as I would want to because I'm always pulled in so many directions so I'm taking a step back and I'm going to focus on watercolors now. Whether I film that or not is another story. <laughs> but check me out on Instagram at Inky Fairy Designs. I'll probably post some pictures up there. So here we go. I've got her features in, and now I am going in with the florals. The paintbrush that I'm using today, I definitely want to mention. That is the Silver Silk 88. It's by the Silver Brush Company, which is my favorite favorite brand of watercolor brushes. I have tried others and there's some, there are really good watercolor brushes out there. There are, there's a lot of them, but I keep coming back to the silver limited brushes and 
so I love them. And I was super excited to try these out. They came out maybe a year or two ago. I love them because the handle is purple. I'm not going to lie. That is something that drew me to them. But I also uh, loved that the bristles, um, I think they're like semi-synthetic or something. Or they might be full synthetic. I'm not sure. Um, they might be a combination. But they keep their shape beautifully. And um, I've always used like the black velvet silver brushes, but these I'm kind of gravitating towards more, especially this cat's tongue one that I'm using that you see. I've used this cat's tongue. This is a number six cat's tongue, and I use it for the entire painting. And I love it because I can get very thick lines that you, or very thick, thick strokes that you can see in the flowers in her hair and as I paint her hair. But um, you also saw that I could get very thin lines um, for the features on her face. So it's super versatile and I felt, and I love being able to paint an entire painting with one brush. I know that's like silly, but I don't know. That's just, that's just something that I enjoy. I don't always think about switching out my brush, even though it might help me in the process. Um, so I like to have one. I, that's why I really fall in love with this one because it's super versatile and I don't have to switch it out. So I have the two flowers in her hair and then I thought I need to paint in the hair so I know where to put the rest of them. Now, I want to tell you, that <laughs> as I thought about my project this week, I really thought I was going to go in a completely different direction. I did. I thought I was going to paint her face you know, like the oval and all of that. And then I thought I would come in with like a graphite pencil, a water soluble graphite pencil, and then do like a one line um, drawing for her features. So where you just don't lift up your, your pen off the paper until you're done. But I'm not, I've never done that before. <laughs> so I didn't think that filming that and would be such a good idea. So I went in this direction where I would just paint the entire girl. I wouldn't draw her features first. I wouldn't sketch out anything. I would just go in and let the paintbrush kind of guide me into the process. And um, I really love how this girl turned out. I think I stepped out of my comfort zone a little bit because I don't do this technique super often, although I do love doing it. And I have done it in, in the past. Um, so it was more comfortable for me than just trying that, like, continuous line drawing. But um, I really love how she's coming out. So um, I painted in her hair, and then I thought it would be cute to add in her eyebrows with the same color. I added a bit of this um, iridescent color to her lips because uh, I love them. I don't use them often enough, and I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to use them. And now I'm going to come in, I um, painted my flowers, and you can see the one rose at the top, um, it kind of looks turned to the sides. And the two roses on the bottom are like facing you. And the way to do that is just don't um, spread out your petals on one side of the flower that you're drawing, and it will create that effect of, it's like, turned upward or sideways. Um, so I painted in the leaves. Now I'm adding a little bit of, um, I don't know, branches or just some random little foliage things that I thought would be fillers to fill in some of that white space. Again, you see that I've used um, splatters because that is, I just love that. I feel like I don't have to be, um, feeling like I need to paint in that whole background, the splatters add that background, and I tried to keep them concentrated around the color where it was on the painting instead of just all over like a lot of times that I do. For the green in her hair, or the green in the leaves, I did combine two colors, um, Terra Verde and Sleeping Beauty Turquoise Genuine basically because I couldn't decide which one I wanted to use. Here I'm adding more of the Sleeping Beauty turquoise uh, to my palette and softening it up with water, lightening it up with water, and creating another layer. 
I'm doing this portion right here after my painting was completely dry and she air dried today <laughs> because guess what my heat tool is packed away so um, she did air dry and I really do like the way that that looks sometimes I just don't have the patience for that and so I will hit my paintings with a heat tool but I do like the way it looks with with um, naturally drying I think it creates a lot of beautiful blends and just unexpected beauty so basically what I'm doing here is just shading just glazing very very slightly uh, with some lavender giving her um, some extra dimension to her face and then to the flowers and now I'm coming in with some neutral tint paint and giving a little bit more texture to her hair all of these paints other than the skin tones that I mentioned at the beginning of the video are from Daniel Smith so I am using my Daniel Smith palette again because I had so much fun using it last week and then I mixed a little bit of lamp black into the neutral tint to deepen up the pupil of her eye. I just I feel like in order to bring a girl to life or any painting, any portrait to life, uh, we have to give her that pupil. And I gave her a few eyelashes and she's done. I think she's super cute. I, I would even say maybe beautiful. <laughs> I just really love this painting. I have looked at it and looked at it and sometimes when I get up from a painting um, I'll look at it and I'll be like, "Ooh, this looks a little, little off. But this one I just really, really love. So I think I'm going to do some more in this style um, where I don't sketch it. Maybe sketching isn't for me. Maybe this is for me. But that's what this challenge has been for me. Trying new things. Um, painting the faces, doing the flowers, and um, you know I did mixed media in the first video so definitely check that one out. Last week I did watercolor but I sketched her face first and then this week for our abstract theme I just went in and painted and didn't sketch or anything like that and I'm really happy with her. So doing something consistently as we know really helps to grow you as an artist. So I encourage you to take this on and I hope you'll play with us again this week. I have loved seeing your projects over the past two weeks and cannot wait to see them this week. All you have to do is use the hashtag faces and florals 2020 and we can come around and see your work on Instagram. Just remember everybody who plays with us will be entered to win an original piece of work from Alexa as well as myself so can't wait to see what you make and hopefully I'll see you in a video before the end of the year bye